think that's probably the uh, the, the safest uh, safest course of action. And, and if you get it, you'll beat it. Um, you're in great shape, and and the stats are away with you uh, are with you as the president now. Just from your observation, I think, president, I think you're right, Brian. I think the president will beat it. The president yeah. beat just about anything that's been thrown at him the last four years. I think he'll beat this too. And and uh, he's a, he's a healthy guy. I think that 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 that'll be the case with him and the first lady, the six, and like like some of the other Americans as well. And she had some miles. It's a good way to put on, that. On the uh, plane, did you notice I hope that he's right. at all? Did you, did you that she was isolating herself? No, I did not. Uh, did not. And again, I, I wasn't I wasn't around that that much on the, uh, during the whole trip, so. Um, uh, I did, didn't notice anything like that. Sure. Uh, on this Friday morning, uh, Mr. Jordan, you know, uh, everybody in the West Wing is now thinking, you know, I, I just saw Hope Hicks yesterday over by the water cooler. We're going to all have, a, have to have a test. Um, yeah. for, for the most part, um, I, I've reached out to a number of White House West Wing sources, and officially they are not having anything to say so far on this Friday morning. Just curious, if you have spoken to anybody at the White House, did they reveal anything that you could publicly no. tell us? No, I mean, look, I, I, I typically talk to Mr. Meadows, who's one of my best friends. I, I typically talk to him a, a fair number of times each week, but I have not talked to him since uh, Tuesday, um, so I, I've not talked to folks at the White House. Uh, I'm sure I'll talk to Mark sometime this weekend. Uh, that's, that's just a normal course of business for, for us, but I have not talked to him since, uh, since Tuesday night's debate. What do you make of all the criticism? If you go on social media, I know you haven't been up long, but when we all got up at 3 o'clock this morning, social media is already nasty comments about, about this. Well, what's new? I mean, what, the, the, you know, they've been doing this since this before President Trump got elected. They're, they're always exactly. attacking conservatives. They're always attacking Not surprising. Republicans. And maybe most importantly, they've had a relentless attack on the president. What, what I always come back to is, in spite of the relentless attack that has come from everyone on the Democrat side and everyone in the mainstream press, this president has delivered for the American people, and that's why he's going to get reelected. I mean, the, we have never had a president do as much of what he said he would do as this guy. Right. And that's what, when I'm, when I'm going across Ohio, that's what I hear from our constituents. That's what I hear as I travel around the country helping, helping our, our colleagues. They appreciate a guy who does what he said, and uh, in spite of this attack, what he's accomplished for the American people is truly amazing. Right. We have been speculating on the president's uh, uh, condition this morning because no word is out. But Maggie Haberman from the New York Times one minute ago uh, tweeted this out. Uh, president Trump is said to have minor symptoms. He was lethargic at the Bedminster fundraiser, apparently last night, per an attendee. As of last night, officials were discussing treatment options as well as options for addressing the nation. So it sounds like... He was exhibiting some sort of minor symptoms. Yeah, I, I mean, I, again, the, the brief amount of time I was around him on, on, on Tuesday, he sure didn't seem that to me. He seemed to have the same energy that he always has, which is amazing. Uh, obviously, he had energy during the debate. Uh, you know, just, just yesterday, everyone was criticizing him for being too aggressive, and now they're saying, oh, no, he, he's, he, he, he wasn't. So, uh, again, this is probably uh, the mainstream press. What, what's what most concerned to me is that the, the president get through this. I think he will. He's a strong individual. And that's why we're praying for him, and I'm sure the country is praying for him and the First Lady as well. Gallup did a poll. They said, who do Americans believe will win the election? 56% said Donald Trump. 40% said Joe Biden. Because even though the polls are one way, overall there's a sense of the American public going the other way. So, listen, by nature, you understand you can have plans, and then when the, when the match starts, yeah. you've got to adjust those plans. So for the next 10 to 15 days, the president's going to be on the shelf, uh, depending on the severity of the symptoms and this. What's the plan for the Republican Party if uh, the president can't lead uh, you in the, with the big rallies and everything and set the tone and make appearances? Right. And what's the plan? What was the plan? What is the plan? Well, the, the president has been calling into congressional districts, doing these, 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 uh, these, these calls where a uh, number of people get on the line and campaigning for our, our good candidates across the country. He's going to continue to do that. He, he, I mean, uh, look, he, is, he has done everything he can to help Republicans win. And, you know, when the president comes in and supports a candidate, that makes a huge difference. His record is like, I don't know, he's only lost like one or two races of all the people that he's endorsed over the, over the last several years. So he will continue to do that, uh, continue to do everything he can to help uh, conservatives and Republicans win across the country and continue exactly. to be the party, just like he's done for the last four years. So if you look at Joe Biden's Twitter account, I'm looking at it now, the last time he tweeted was 12 hours ago. And it was about the president criticizing him for his response to COVID-19 and all the number of deaths. 
and unemployment. Uh, do you think he should have, should he be tweeting out something immediately this morning, even just well wishes for the president? Of course. Uh, you know, I said this the other night, I think maybe, you know, the other night the debate, the first thing Joe Biden should have done was announce he's running for president because we never see the guy. Uh, I mean, what, what is it? For, for more than half the days of September, I think he, he closed off his campaign at like 930 in the morning. So, uh, look, it doesn't surprise me that he hasn't said anything for 12 hours. He goes he goes days on days after day. You know, Marjorie, you can't even get an 8 o'clock call, much less a 3 a.m. call. A cup of coffee and then calls it a day. So, um, Forget it. We, we'd have Benghazi to the to the Kazilian degree with this guy. This president has run his campaign, and even with this virus, he will still be out communicating and talking to the American people via Zoom, via via telephone, like he's done for our House candidates around the country. Uh, the governor of Michigan uh, just put out a statement that uh, the president testing positive for coronavirus should, quote, serve as a wake-up call to every single American. The virus doesn't care if you're rich or poor, a Republican or a Democrat, young or old, no one is immune, not even the president. Clearly, with 32 days left before the election, uh, Congressman, the number one issue going forward with the president having COVID is going to be COVID. They gotta make it political. Yeah, I mean, look, it's always it's always been an issue, uh, uh, and, and it'll continue to be, obviously, with uh, with, with with the president's uh, situation. But um, no you know, well wishes in that tweet from the from the get go. We've talked about this when he took decisive action early on, especially relative to China, and was criticized by the left, criticized by Pelosi, criticized by Biden, criticized by all these individuals uh, on the Democrat side. It would turned out to be the right action that he took. They're always going to attack the president, but again, that's nothing new. They've been doing it since he came down the escalator. They've been doing it since July of 16 when they launched the fake Trump-Russia investigation. So that's nothing new. I think the American people see through it. I think the American people appreciate this president's record of cutting taxes, reducing regulations, growing our economy. Prior to the virus, the strongest economy we had, lowest unemployment in 50 years, all the foreign policy wins. Doing what he said he would do, out of the Iran deal, out of the Paris Climate Accords, uh, embassy in Jerusalem, the Abraham Accords he just did, hostages sold from North Korea, gotcha. the, the, the courts. I mean, you got, you got Gorsuch and Kavanaugh on the court, Coney Barrett on deck. That is exactly what he told the American people he would do, put conservatives on the highest right. court in the land. So in the end, the American people are going to appreciate that. And that's what's going to carry the day for the president when he wins on November 3rd. Yeah, Joe Biden says he's the worst president he's ever had. You have a different opinion the than we've ever had. The best, yeah. uh, Jim Jordan, thanks so much. And as we speculate... Joe Biden, Biden is disingenuous. He knows he's the yeah. best president uh, ever. Military, now reassuring President Trump remains commander-in-chief. In an attempt to ease national security concerns, let's bring in the best. He's uh, just itching to be president.